Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're in a very, very unusual period, as you all know. So uh, I'm going to do some things today with, uh, with my two business partners. And we're going to talk about how to navigate this pandemic, give you some business tools. Uh, what I'd like to do is introduce or say hello to Mark McMahon. Mark, you've been unmuted. Is there anything you'd like to say before we start? Uh, hello, David. Yes, and thank you How for giving you? me just a few moments to talk. Sure. I am doing well, thank you. You know, we're, we're certainly in some uncharted waters here, and uh, with Harvey, we're an exterior buildings uh, supplier to our contractors that uh, are out in the field uh, doing everything they can to, to earn every dollar and put food on their tables and, and continue to have roofs over their heads. And so I'm really excited to have you guys talking today about what is our survival guide for residential contractors. Um, just thrilled to uh, to have you guys host this meeting and looking forward to a lot of the content. Uh, Mark, thank you for the invite. And we're gonna do this every Thursday, for every Thursday in April, because as you know, things are changing quickly. So what we'd like to do, Mark, is circle back every Thursday, give you the latest updates, tools that are available, uh, disaster assistance that is, uh, that is available, and how to access that assistance. Does that sound good? I think that's uh, right on track with what we all want to hear about. Thank you. Terrific. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So my name is David Luperger, and I'm a former building contractor, or as a friend of mine likes to say, a recovering remodeler. And so I have sat where you sit. And um, this is an unusual time. I did this for about 25 years as, as a residential contractor. So I really do understand some of the challenges in doing this. I've actually asked my two business partners to join me. Uh, they also have over 25 years of experience each in the residential remodeling market. And I wanna bring them online to share what we're learning. So uh, let me introduce you, uh, Paul, and uh, you've got the most experience of all of us. So kind of give us a brief yeah. intro. So, I mean, I hate to admit it, I've been doing this for 40 years. That makes me an old guy, right? I was, I was <laughs> trying to be diplomatic, Paul. I know, what can I say? I've been doing this for 40 years. I know I don't look it, right? That's what you're supposed to say. Um, okay. Uh, you know, I have, an, I have a master's from Cal Poly, not like my buddy who has the MBA from Stanford, but it's some education. I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of contractors over the last 40 years, anywhere between 2 million and 100 million. And I've learned what everybody does right and what they do wrong. Um, so I've got a lot of experience. Unfortunately, I don't have any experience in pandemics. This is like a learning experience for me. My very first pandemic, at least it was declared. So it's an exciting time. We're working with, working with about 50 contractors now that, that we are clients. And everybody's got new information every day. So it's it's challenging and exciting time, but any any adversity has opportunities, and that's what we're looking for. Why don't you pick it up here, Ed? Well, hi everyone. My name is Ed Earl. I uh I'm in San Diego, California. I um for the last 20 years have run a construction project management company. I serve as an owner's rep for custom high-end homes and high-end remodels. And I'm the guy with the MBA from Stanford. So uh, I've got a kind of a corporate business background as well. So, um, and been a business coach with the two gentlemen on this call here for, for quite a while. I've known these guys for, for a long time and I'm just excited and, and happy to be here and to hopefully help you guys navigate these challenging times. So shall we get started here? <clears throat> Um, yeah, go, go ahead so, and run with this, Ed, because, um, okay. yeah, share some of our experience. Yeah. So, you know, we are, between the three of us, we're talking to about 50, over 50 residential contractors nationwide every week. So we really have our finger on the pulse of what's going on. And we're telling you it's changing daily, um, it, if, if not at least weekly, if not daily. And so, the purpose of these webinars is going to be to give you guys the latest information, the latest strategies and approaches that we're hearing. Uh, everyone is in a different place. I don't know, depending on, on what state that you're in, you might have uh, no restrictions on construction. You might have some certain limited ones. 
And unfortunately, if you're in one of the five states um, right now, there are uh, no construction allowed um, in, in five, of, five of the states. So we're gonna be here to give you kind of all of these resources and information as we, as we go forward. So today we wanna share with you five survival tips. So let's move on to the first tip, which is communication is key. You know, in this time of, of, of this crisis, it is so important for you to communicate and communicate to your three primary audiences. And those are your employees, your clients, and your prospects. Now, your employees, your message to each of them is a little different, right? So your employees, they need your leadership. They need you to assure them that you are gonna make it through this crisis, right? For those of you that have been through ones in the past, if you've been around long enough to have survived what happened to us all in 2008, you can rely on that as well. Now, this doesn't mean that you're not scared yourself, that you don't have your own fears and your own concerns. All of us do. But to your employees, you need to be expressing yourself as a confident leader that's going to lead that business forward. Now, the second group that you need to speak with is your clients. Your clients need to know a couple of things. First off, if you're actually working on their jobs, they need to know that you're taking all the required safety precautions to make sure that you're doing everything that's needed to, to curb and not to spread the, the COVID-19 infection. The second is, obviously, we're having uh, unanticipated circumstances that are causing everything from, from inspection delays to uh, supply chain disruptions, and all of those can impact your completion schedules. And so you need to communicate with your clients as those things come up. And believe me, as I said earlier, this stuff is happening on a weekly, if not daily basis. So you need to be communicating with your clients much more frequently. And then the third group that you need to speak with is your prospects, right? Your prospects need to know that your company is moving forward and that you will continue to build after this crisis is over. Now, let me give you a couple of other ideas uh, on this communication here. You know, I'm sure that you are all in the same information overload that we all are, right? Everyone is sending out emails. So what you need to do is you need to realize that at this point, people wanna hear from you. They wanna, they wanna see your face, they wanna hear your voice. And so now is not the time to be just sending out a bunch of emails. There are so many people already sending those emails. Don't be part of that noise. Pick up the phone, call your client. If they're not there, leave them a voicemail. They'll really appreciate hearing your voice. And if you need to leave them a voicemail, and we know a lot of people are just getting inundated right now, just send them a quick, quick text and say, hey, I just left you this voicemail and I just want you to, to, to listen to it. So also, um, be face to face with your clients. You know, in this, this time of, of social distancing is not an excuse to not be face to face. There are ways that you can do this and I wanna share with you three of the best um, technologies that, that we're using and encouraging all of our clients to use. So the first of those is Zoom. Now for many of you, you probably hadn't heard of Zoom a few weeks ago, but my guess is that most of you have probably participated in a Zoom call. You know, I just talked to my, my 83 year old father yesterday and they had his Kiwanis meeting on Zoom yesterday. And this is a bunch of 70 and 80 year olds that are not up to speed on things. So I'm telling you, if my 83 year old father and all of his Kiwanis buddies can get on a Zoom call, you can as well. Now the benefit of Zoom is really in two different applications. One, you can use it for team and client meetings uh, among your team yourself. And what we're recommending and seeing many of our clients are doing, they're just having a touch basis meeting every morning. Uh, you set the time, say nine o'clock every morning, everyone hops on a Zoom call for 10 or 15 minutes, just because no one's in the office together, you're not able to interact together. And so this is a way for you to be able to stay connected with your, with your, your staff. And obviously you can do this with, with client meetings as well. But the other great thing about Zoom is that you can also do a screen share. And so what this allows you to do is you can still make a sales presentation. Now, I know that for many of you, you're not necessarily doing sales presentations, but if you have been working ongoingly with a client, 
don't let this stop you. Continue to move forward with them. Learn how to use Zoom. You literally can show the presentation on your screen as well as have face-to-face -face interaction with them so that you can actually see their reaction. You can see what their and, response is as you're walking through the budget. Yes, Paul. And Ed, I'd like a quick comment. Um, we found that it's much easier to close when resources are limited. So a lot of our clients have been using the Zoom to get people to make selections in a hurry so they'll get them ordered, to, to get the client to make a decision on to commit because they want to get the permit in when permits are available again. So we found this has accelerated a lot of sales if you're willing to stay on it. So it's a good time to close. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Paul. All right, so the second technology I want to talk to you about kind of sounds like Zoom, but it's Loom. So that's Loom with an L. This is a video messaging alternative to emails. Again, people are getting so inundated with emails, but they want to hear your voice. They want to see your face. Loom allows you to write from your computer as fast as you can type an email. You can, you can get onto Loom and record a video message. And if you're a slow typer like me, you can actually do it even faster than typing up an email. It's a personalized private video message that you can then send to them in a link to an email. You get notified when they watch it so that they can actually see that message. And it just gives a much more personal, personalized approach in this time of social distancing. The other thing that you can do with Loom, just like you can with Zoom, you can also share your screen. So let's say that you're just working on a spreadsheet and you've updated some new numbers. You can pull up that spreadsheet. Your picture will appear in a little bubble on the, on the bottom corner, and then you can walk your client through whatever, whatever that you're, you're wanting to, to speak with them on. Okay, the third technology is something you use on your, on your phone, and that's called Glide. And Glide, just like, like Loom is the alternative to, to an email, Glide is an alternative to a text message. So it's basically a way that you can record a video message and you can send it through your smartphone just like you would uh, send a, a text message. Um, I prefer that to, I know that if you have an iPhone or a Droid, you can record a voice message and send that as a text. But the thing that I like about Glide is a couple of things. One, they'll actually see your face. And two, you actually get notified when they're watching the video. So you know that there was confirmation that they actually got your message. All right, so those are three key, um, key uh, strategies for keeping communication. So I'm gonna turn this over now to Paul and let him talk to you a little bit more about uh, marketing in, this, in these challenging times. Thanks, Ted. Well, marketing is my favorite subject. I've been doing this for 40 years and I still love marketing. And I see this crisis as an incredible opportunity to market. People are gonna be listening to you they haven't listened before. You know, in the foxhole, everybody becomes buddies, so we're sort of in this war together, which allows a lot of the barriers to relationship to be broken down. So this, this crisis will leave opportunities you haven't had in the past. Um, maybe the best time to be selling, but it's the best time to be marketing. And I consider, you know, marketing is everything you needed to get the phone ring. Marketing is what you do to let people know that you can help them. And then sales is getting people to commit to that help for everything that happens after the phone rings. So it's a great time to do that. Um, moving on, I'd like to talk about architects. So the pandemic training a shift and remote communication, embrace the technology. I call this like the, for lack of a better term, the digital revolution for construction. And it, People are now, I've got one guy who's finding he can run his company, you know, from his living room and is working just as well. People are more open to that kind of thing. So if you happen to have a cloud-based management system like Co-Construct or Builder Trend or any of those, now is the time to shine because a lot of contractors don't and you can manage jobs where other people can't remotely. So it's a great opportunity. Video, video conferencing like Zoom is a great time to talk to people. It's all an amazing opportunity, and the good news you can do it from your living room. Now, I've been pushing marketing with architects for many years, having been, been in residential construction for, you know, 40 years. Um, I've tried everything, literally everything, and spent a lot of my money and other people's money trying to figure out how in the heck do you get a relationship going with an architect. Now, architects already have a favorite contractor, and it's probably not you. So normally this process takes a long time. It takes, you know, like 
six meetings, you got to meet with people, and we've got a whole system we've developed over time on how to meet with architects. But the good news is now that architects are probably more willing than ever to take your phone call because they're sitting at home. Now, so it's easier to get to them. You set up a Zoom call and you can demonstrate your web-based software. Now, I'm going to vary a little bit from our um, topic because we have some literally news of the day, right, Ed? This is like today. Um, tomorrow, there's an application opening for what's called, uh, is it, what is it, Ed? Personal, what is it? Perceived, um, give me the initials here. The payroll, pro payroll protection plan. Payroll protection plan. You can now, you can apply for that as of tomorrow. Now, the thing is, there's only $388 billion to dole out in this payroll protection plan, which sounds like a lot of money until everybody applying for it. So as of tomorrow, and this is gonna change, if you don't apply, you may be not get the money because you know, you're not gonna be in line. Now, this is the significant amount of money. Um, it's like eight, what is it, eight times your weekly, it's your eight weeks worth of payroll, right? Or two and a half times Correct. your payroll. So right. we had just talked to a client who has what, 17 employees? So he was talking $150,000, $200,000 is a gift from the government. That's the good news. The bad news is if you don't apply, you won't get it. And the other bad news, if you don't apply soon enough, they're gonna run out. So this is hot off the presses as of today. So we've been coming up with a way to market architects by sharing this information with them. So I, my our normal talk, I talk about sharing your cloud-based um, construction project management project with them. But I think given what's happening literally today and tomorrow, I would call them, once you understand how that program works, you can get on our website and we explain the whole thing and how it works. Um, or you can call us personally and we'll explain it to you. But get on the phone with the architects because if you can show them how to get free money that they couldn't get any other way, you're gonna become their new best friend. So this is an opportunity that literally exists for tomorrow. Does it sound crazy, Ed? Like tomorrow and tomorrow only? <laughs> Where people will be able to call and say, you gotta apply for this thing today. And there's some other details you can check on our website and figure it out. But I think that's right now the absolute best thing for architects. Now, moving along, there's something else you can also do with clients. Um, with clients, you can um, get a hold of the phone. I've got a woman I'm working with in Portland, and she's been calling her clients on the phone, reconnecting with them, design, with, with them, saying, now that you're stuck at home, what's the room you hate the most? Starting a conversation about the room they hate the most, how to redesign it, and she's signed up several clients, um, literally over the phone, using Zoom to go over designs or whatever to sell them on a product, by contacting with them that way. So there's a lot of opportunities that are available that weren't available a very short time ago. So remember a couple things, and I'll go to the last slide here, Ed. Um, you, you fear or, you know, what do you call it? Confidence is contagious. So for God's sakes, if you're afraid, don't call anybody because they're just going to pick up on your voice and your fear. But if you're confident that this is not the zombie apocalypse or it's not the meteor hitting and we're all going to get through this, which I think is a reasonable assumption, on the other side of this is a lot of opportunity. So stay in touch with people. If you're confident and you call them, we've had more people commit literally to doing projects the last couple of weeks than we have had in a long time because they want to get things done. Another thing that's happened is if people have the money and the resources, they seem to be moving forward because they don't want to get the back of the line. It's sort of like a toilet paper Costco thing. They want to make sure they get the permits, they get the, you know, the drywall, whatever they need to get things done. So they are committing. If you don't have the resources, people are bailing. But it's a great opportunity to find out who's who and take the opportunity to get some new clients during this and also meet some new architects well. The other, just aside here, is if you have any subcontractors that do not know about this program, contact us and let, let us tell you about it. Because if you don't apply, you won't get the money. And none of the information is in Spanish. So if you have any Latin contractors, they're not going to have a clue what's going on. And so you can contact these people and say, make sure you apply for the money now. Because you want your contractors to get this money too. If one of your contractors, for example, says, well, I think I'm going to lay people off for a week just to be safe and then hire them back, he's going to lose out on all the money. And he needs to know that before he lays the people off. A lot of things happening. They're happening day by day. It's a very exciting time. Just make sure that you're on top of the curve. Go back to it. Well, let me take it over here. 
because as a contractor, you're leading and you're leading the employees who work with you. You're leading the trade contractors who provide their services. You're working with your suppliers and you're truly quarterbacking every project. And so people are looking to you for leadership. So as you know, Ed mentioned earlier, if you're still working on site, you know, really following the CDC high hygiene recommendations and communicating that to both staff and clients. But let's go one step further. Come up with a plan with your company, whether you have two employees or 10, and basically come up with a plan collectively, collaboratively, of what we're going to do and how we're going to move through this together. In the absence of information, people get scared. And I will guarantee you, you have employees now who are wondering, will I have a job next week? This is where we can step in and begin to fill the void. Number one, when you're sitting with employees, communicate if they're sick, stay home. Begin to survey employees if they have families, school-aged children who can't go to school. Do they need to work from the house? If so, can you make sure they have remote access? What can they do from the house? And really communicate to your employees, we're in business. You know, we're moving forward. If you're working on site, doing it safely, if work has been furloughed, furloughed then communicating to your employees um, we're moving forward, and you'll see as we get into some of these loan, uh, the disaster loan opportunities that are available, you can put together a plan. So it's really communicating to employees and to clients you're moving forward using some of the remote communication tools and communicating to your employees that you are proactively leading them through this crisis. So in the event that there is a community shutdown, create a list of the minimum employees needed to maintain or to oversee anything that needs to be done during that slowdown. Uh, simultaneously, if people are not at work, you know, we oftentimes work with contractors around the country and there's a distinction of working on the business versus working in the business. We're all busy working in the business. And so oftentimes when we bring up team training or the creation of standard operating procedures and documentation, you know, the common response is, well, I'm too busy. Well, is there an opportunity now to work on your business, to put that time aside a day a week where you with your team can focus on some business related documentation and move this into a place because when this ends and it will end that you'll be ahead of where you are now because of the projects that you could 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 complete and work on so when you're working with uh you know clients and they say i'm not sure what we're going to do right now can we just kind of you know take your foot off the gas as ed was saying Continue to engage your clients in that virtual design environment. Uh, we can almost do everything online between Zoom and Loom. Every supplier, you know, can supply links to selections. So we can continue to work with clients moving through the selection process. And as Paul said, can we get to a point where we can submit a permit? When we really look at things being held up as they are right now, if someone says, I'm waiting to see, in the last two years in this environment, you know, we've had contractors who've had three, four, five, six month backlogs. And what I'm trying to tell our clients now is if you can work with your customers and move them through the design and selection process, they're at the front of the line. And if someone doesn't pursue that in the three or four months when we come out of this, they're gonna be back into that three, four, five, six month backlog. So can we communicate with our clients proactively and guide them through this process using some of the tools we know? Now, if jobs are on hold and people are saying, I need to wait, and this is happening to all of us, 
I'm going to recommend you put together a 60 day run rate or dot com terms, they call it burn rate. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to project for the months of April and May, what will be your total expenses, including overhead, employee compensation plus burden, and owner's compensation, and project that you out know, 60, th 60 days. They're Go ahead. They're going to need this. They're going to need this to fill out the forms anyway, right? Yes, they will. Yeah. yeah. So basically, what we're saying is project out 60 days. Look at the money you have, the work you have going on. Look at your projection, because if we go through the PPP program, you're going to be sharing that to get some of that payroll assistance. But this is, is a, a point of confidence for you and a point of communication. If you can learn this and get your arms around this, communicate this to employees. All right. They need to see your leading. They need to see there's some sense of security. So this gives you some understanding of how we're going to navigate let's just say the next 30 days, how we're going to get through April. So understanding this, this is what your employees need to hear. Now, this is the, some of the loan and the disaster assistance we're talking about. You know, we can go back to employees and we can say, if we don't have that 60 day run rate, does someone want time off? And another, you know, opportunity might be is the company wide, can we share in some temporary 20% salary reduction and share this across the board? I also want to encourage you to, if you have a lease, contact your landlord. Can we suspend rent? Can we suspend, if you own something, a mortgage payment? Call your truck and equipment uh, lessor. And can we put anything on hold? And look, if you don't ask, you don't know. But there is financial support. As Paul mentioned, it's only what? Three hundred and sixty billion, did you say, Paul? Yeah, three hundred and sixty billion. Yeah. So look, state unemployment insurance is ramping up and in depth. Next week when we do this, we're going to talk about the economic disaster assistance loan that's available. We're going to review specifically the paycheck protection program, uh, what the program is, how to apply. And go ahead and, and check with your CPA or payroll service about the deferral of Social Security payroll taxes. All this is about maintaining cash within your business. But as both Ed and Paul said, this is changing daily. It's a moving target. So we, we're doing this weekly so we can continue to come back and on a weekly basis give you updates. Now, David, so, I would like yeah. to, thanks for pushing. I would like to offer, you know, I guess there's, you know, 22 people in this program right now. If any of you want to call us, our, our website's at the bottom, because this is happening really fast. <laughs> so if you don't want to wait till next week and you want to hear about, you know, what to do today or tomorrow to apply for those debt loans, we'd be happy to talk to you. I'm in California, normally Hawaii, but I'm in California now. David's in Denver and uh, Ed's in San Diego. So get a time zone thing going on. But, it, you know, we're here to help because we feel like, you know, the tidal wave is coming and we got the keys to the raft boat, right? <laughs> it's time to, you know, it's time to reach out to your friends. It's time to make things happen. We're here for you. Call us if you need to call us. But everything's happening literally daily. This isn't something that you're going to wait two weeks and figure out. It's today. So if you want to help, if you want to give us a call or whatever, we're here for you. And it's not going to cost you anything. We'll be happy to help you out. Yeah, and, and to piggyback program, right? that, that, Paul, that we're going to do no cost every Wednesday at 9 Pacific, noon Eastern, just a one-hour open coaching call. And we did it this Wednesday, had about 20 people online reviewing questions, answering questions, and just providing some of that backup assistance. So we'd certainly encourage you uh, to join us you know, during that time. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Ed? Yeah, let's go back to the, the, the slide, the fifth slide. I just want to summarize here on our, our fifth point. Um, and um, we are, there we go. Um, also wanted to let you know, we're, we're, we want to keep our information content to about 30 minutes because we're finding people are on information overload with these 90 minute, two hour long webinars. So, um, so we're, we're just about done here. This is going to be our last slide. If you have any questions, 
Um, please feel free to type those in now, and um, we will have a little bit of time at the end to answer any questions. But let me finish up here by giving you our, our last bit of advice, which I really feel is the most important, which is be informed, stay connected, and keep positive. So again, with all of the information changing so rapidly, it's important that you stay informed, but don't watch the news. You know, the news is just a, an opportunity for you to get into an overwhelmed situation and to, to, to increase that panic that's, that's inside of you. Um, and that's great for selling newspapers and getting eyeballs to, to watch the television, but it's not good for your personal well-being. I'll just share with you last week, um, by Friday, I'd had it. I, I read this article on Friday night that just had me convinced that, you know, we were all going to be, be doomed. And, and I woke up so depressed on Saturday and I said, you know what? I'm taking a, a two day news fast. And I didn't watch the news. I didn't check my phone to read any, any kinds of news updates. I didn't get online. I just took two days to clear my head. And when I went back to everything on Monday, the news really wasn't that much different. So be selective. Don't watch the news. You know, in today's world of the internet, there are so many great information sources. Um, you know, be selective. Find well-researched, well-documented articles from reputable sources and use that to, to build your information. Second is connect with your peers. You know, reach out to your colleagues. Um, if you're in a, in a Builder 20 group or, or, or any kind of a group like that, reach out to them. Reach out to your trade partners. As Paul said earlier, you know, everyone's trying to figure this all out together. Now is the time to, to reach out to them. Next, you know, be optimistic about the long term and focus on short-term solutions. That's all we can do at this point. No one really knows where we're gonna be in, in two or three months, you know, let alone six months from now. So really focus on the short-term and be optimistic for the long-term. This is a pandemic, all right? This is, this is I think, very different than say 9-11 where we never knew when that was gonna be over. We never knew when there was gonna be another terrorist attack. We'll know when, when the pandemic is under enough control that we can then resume our, our daily activities. And the next thing, and this is really important, be selective as to who you share your concerns with. Look, as I said earlier, I get scared. I get anxious. But I'm selective at who I speak to about that. Don't talk to your employees about your fears and concerns. If you have a business partner, if you have board members, those are the people that you want to talk to. If your wife is part of your business, obviously you want to speak with her. If she's not part of your business, be careful what you share with her or him, right? The kids are home from school. If they're at home having to take care of them, that may not be the right thing to share with your spouse all of the, the concerns and, and fears that you have about your business. So, and then the last thing is, as I said before, you know, this too shall pass, right? This is just another another uh, blip and it's another another cycle and for those of you that have been in the business as long as all of three of us have we've all been through this before and we know that we all it all passes and we'll all go get through this at some point so all those right are well it great like comments we've got, uh, tw 27 attendees here i want to acknowledge all of you for taking the time out i know how crazy busy it is if you're like any of us I'm working uh, twice as hard, I feel like, as I have at any other time. So I know some people feel like they've got extra time sitting at home, but that's not the case for me and probably not the case for many of you. So thank you for taking the time um, to watch this webinar. And uh, so David, does it look like David, David, I have any questions? questions. David, I haven't, David, I haven't seen any. Um, I don't see anything in the chat box. And uh, Mark. I was going to bring you back on to see uh, any closing comments I, I, you might have. Mark, you're with uh, Harvey. But uh, in the meantime, Paul, go ahead. No, I was going to say that, you know, if you need some help immediately, please reach out to us because we're here for you guys. We want it to make happen. And everybody said this webinar is more than happy to go to our website and give us a call and we can help whatever we can do. Terrific. Terrific. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, we've got this recorded. So I will send this link to uh, to Harvey so that Harvey can share this on their website. Mark, is there some comments you want to make before we leave? 
Uh, just a uh, really appreciation for the three of you uh, providing your insights. I, I think uh, one of the key takeaways is just that communication piece, the ability to respond uh, quickly to our employees, whether they're at our contractors or even here at Harvey building products. Um, we are going through some uncertain times, but the confidence and the communication, I think, are so critical in us getting through this together. So just really thanks for your insights. Mark, thanks for the invite. And, uh, man, we're going to be back next Thursday, same time, same place. Look forward to it. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Bye. Thanks for coming. So, uh, yeah, okay. let's say goodbye. Okay. And please reach out if we can talk more. And uh, if we don't hear from you sooner, let's plan to talk next Thursday, same time. All right. Take care, thanks, everyone. David. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good afternoon.